Hi everyone. Today I will teach you about pacemaker therapy. If you gone through my uh, channel, you could see that in the previous sections I was teaching about arrhythmia and uh, conduction deficit, otherwise heart block. So following to that, there is a management for heart block is pacemaker therapy. So in detail, we see about pacemaker therapy, which are the different types of pacemakers and which are the different uh, modes of pacemaker therapy. As we see the definition of pacemaker, pacemaker is a medical device, otherwise we can say it's a therapeutic device which is used to provide an artificial electrical stimulus to heart muscle when heart fails to provide cardiac output adequate to meet physiological demand or to terminate the taking arrhythmias. As you know, this pacemaker therapy is the management for conduction block, otherwise we say heart block. In such situations, what happens? The SA in other is the natural pacemaker of heart fails to generate electrical impulses or to carry out the cardiac conduction system. So, in such situations, we treat with pacemaker. There is an artificial device which we implant to generate impulses and normalize the cardiac function to pump out blood to meet the metabolic demand of our body. So, another way it is they were originally designed to treat heart disease of impulse formation that is heart block and conduction that is the conduction deficit otherwise the heart block which result in sympathomatic bradycardia that is what we use pacemaker here we see the indications for pacemaker therapy so first the indication is an acute av block av block in the sense atrial ventricular block that is Third degree AV block associated with any one of the following conditions. That is patient with bradycardia, patient with arrhythmia recurring drug resulting in bradycardia, the documented periods of asystole that is more than 3 seconds and catheter ablation at a AV junction and neuromuscular disorders with the AV block. And pacing for chronic bifascicular and trifascicular block. AV block associated with myocardial infarction, sinus node dysfunction, sustained ventricular tachycardia with or without prolonged QT interval, hypersensitive carotid sinus syndrome, and hypertrophic or dilated cardiomyopathy. Then see what are the types of pacemaker therapy. Pacemaker therapy is mainly categorized into Temporary pacemaker therapy and permanent pacemaker therapy that is based on the duration of pacemaker therapy. So if we need a short term period we use the temporary pacemaker that is we say temporary pacemaker therapy and for long term use in the sense the patient is with a third degree heart block or complete heart block they needs permanent pacemaker therapy. So the first picture this is the temporary pacemaker and this is the permanent pacemaker and other than that the temporary pacemaker therapy is further categorized into transvenous pacemaker therapy, transcutaneous pacemaker therapy and epicardial pacemaker therapy. We can see the one by one. This is what the temporary pacemaker therapy. The first one is transvenous pacemaker therapy. Transvenous pacemaker therapy in the sense the percutaneous puncture of internal jugular vein or subclavian vein or anticubital or femoral vein is used to uh, insert the lid and that lid will insert it into the uh, right atrium or the right ventricle that is based on the unipolar or bipolar or your unifascicular or bifascicular that is based on atrial pacing or the ventricular pacing they do. So then the temporary pacemaker for the first one is transvenous approach. The transvenous is the lead is inserted through the vein that may be internal jugular vein, subclavian vein, anticubital or femoral vein. Second one is the transcutaneous, that is transcutaneous in the sense the large surface electrodes are placed on the chest wall. That is through the, our external body we give the, uh, the this pacemaker therapy, that is what transcutaneous. Then epicardial pacing, epicardial pacing that is electrodes are placed on the epicardium that may be 
uh, endocard that is transvenous approach or epicardial surgical approach we use especially patients undergoing cabg they most often come up with the epicardial pacing this is a picture picturization of the epicardial pacing we can see which are the components of pacemaker the pacemaker has mainly three components the first one is pulse generator or we say battery this usually has uh, five years or ten years of life based on that we they are supposed to uh, replace the battery or the pulse generator according to the life of the particular uh, equipment then second is the leads that is which is connected from the generator to the uh, uh, carrying the impulses then sensing circuit sensing circuit that will sense the uh, the generator impulses and it will transmit to the myocardium we can see the coding of pacemaker coding of pacemaker in the sense uh, based on the uh, area where it is paced where it is sensed and response to sensing programmability and it take dysarrhythmic functions based on these features they give a letters so in, in the following slide we can detail see about that so there has the uh, the first letter the first letter denotes chamber being paced maybe atria maybe ventricle or dual then the second letter represents the chamber being sensed that is also maybe atria maybe ventricle or the dual here also atria ventricle and dual dual in the sense atrium as well as the ventricle then third letter represents response to sensing that may be inhibitor or none if you can see detailed letter the fourth letter represents programmability and the fifth letter is take a dysarrhythmic function as we see said already we can see the pacemaker course the first letter represents chamber being paced the letters usually write o a b and d o represents none a represents atrial that is atrial pacing v represents ventricular pacing and d represents dual in the sense atrial as well as ventricular pacing similarly the second letter represents the chamber being sensed that is also the letters are similarly to the previous that is o a b and d o represents none a represents atrial sensing b represents ventricular sensing d represents dual atrial and ventricular sensing then third letter represents response to sensing that is also o represents none i re rep represents inhibitor and t triggered and d dual then fourth letter is programmability that is o represents none p represents simple program m represents multiple program c is a communicative or wait responsive capability and fifth letter is take a dysrhythmic function o represents none p pacing s shock and d dual this is what the pacemaker code based on this code usually in the patient file if you see the doctors after pacemaker implantation they write this code maybe a a i or v v i or d d d so with the letter we can identify which uh, area they paste where it is sensing what is the response and what is the programmability and what is the tachyarrhythmic function then single chamber pacing already we said single chamber that is uh, atrial pacing or maybe ventricular pacing so in single chamber pacing the electrode that is a lead is placed in the atria or ventricle so this may be unipolar or bipolar unipolar in the sense it contains single wire and bipolar contains two wires and next is the dual chamber pacing and dual chamber pacing uh, simultaneously both atria and ventricles were paced as well as sensing then it can be bipolar or unipolar then here see what is unipolar pacemaker operation the unipolar pacemaker operation the pulse generator delivers an electrical impulse the impulse that is the stimulus travels from the pulse generator to the electrode at the tip of the catheter then current exit through the electrode tip stimulate the myocardium and complete the circuit by traveling through body tissues to the positive terminal the metal plate on the pulse generator serve as the positive terminal this is all the unipolar pacemaker operation whereas in the uh, 
bipolar pacemaker operation, the pulse generator delivers an electrical stimulus at a predetermined rate. The stimulus travels down the negative electrode wire. Then electrical stimulus is delivered to myocardium. Current spread through cardiac muscle then to positive electrode wire. Current returns to pulse generator completing the circuit. This is for the bipolar pacemaker operation. Then pacemaker implantation. What is the procedure and how it is carried out? Usually the pacemaker implantation is done under the local anesthesia. The procedure duration is usually takes only 1 to 2 hours. And once pacemaker is implanted, following cascade software that is tissue reaction to lead, myocardial edema, cellular inflammation, fibroblast and macrophages move to area that is as the, as the secondary to the inflammatory response. Then fibroblast produce collagen forms and fibrotic capsules. Then this, this is a sequence of pacemaker implantation. The first one is a venous access. Venous access in the sense usually preferred jugular vein, cephalic and subclavian veins. Then lead insertion testing that is the in, they, they identify the venous axis, then they insert the lead, then they perform the lead testing. That is by external device they use for that. Then pocket formation and there is a pulse generator implant. This is what the area they create pocket. That is a subcutaneous pocket they create in the most preferable site is left, uh, left shoulder, near to left shoulder. That is below the clavicle. And Finally, they do the programming by an external device. They fix the rate, they fix the amplitude and all. By this, they complete the procedure. This is a vital part. What are the nursing considerations in pacemaker implantation? As a part of nursing consideration, we are supposed to perform assessment. In assessment, which includes assess for clinical manifestations of dysarrhythmias and alterations in cardiac output. Like we have to check for palpitation, single, shortness of breath, chest pain and heart rhythm should be observed. Then assess the knowledge and understanding of the patient regarding pacemakers and we are supposed to carry out the uh, patient education. Discuss the financial situation and the related issues and uh, the, as a counseling function then are supposed to carry out the counsel the patient and patient relatives. Next we see the patient education. The patient who over undergone pacemaker implantation, we are supposed to teach them certain vital points. First one is pulse counting. Teach them how to count the pulse and uh, educate them to maintain a diary and uh, record every, every day's pulse. That is already in the pacemaker, maybe demand pacing or fixed rate pacing, patient is supposed to monitor the pulse rate periodically and they are supposed to record it on a diary. Second is a report sens sensations that is like fatigue, dizziness, heart beating, irregularity. If they feel any of these findings, they are supposed to report to the healthcare professional. Then avoid high voltage areas, magnetic force areas and radiation. Because once they accidentally or any occurrence of exposing to these areas, there is an interruption in the pacemaker function. Avoid being near high tension wires or radio transmitters that is also interrupt the pacemaker function. Then avoid metal detectors. Carry pacemaker identity cards. The patient who over undergone pacemaker implantation, they always have a pacemaker identity card that is the tag they are supposed to carry in their hands. Then do not lift weight more than 5 to 10 pounds for 6 weeks after the surgery. Immediate postoperatively for a 6 weeks, they should not lift weight. Do not move hands and shoulders vigorously for 6 weeks. That is especially the side which, where, where the pacemaker is implanted. Normal activities can be resumed within 6 weeks. And discuss about the side effects, purpose, dose and schedule of prescribed medications. Everything suppose teach the patient you know, once they uh, discharge or throughout these times, they are supposed to be educated all relevant matters relating to pacemaker and how to take care of pacemaker. 
Next, we see what are the complications we can expect when the patient undergone pacemaker therapy. First of all, pneumothorax, as you know, pneumothorax is abnormal collection of air in the lungs. That is, uh, while puncturing the leads, there may be accidental damage to pleura and there is a risk of pneumothorax. Then, lead perforation, ventricular arrhythmia, as it is in inserting, there is a chances of abnormal electrical reaction in the heart. Tudler syndrome, pacemaker syndrome, and loss of capture, similarly, site infection, that is where the subcutaneous socket they created, there is a risk of infection, then erosion may be there, pacemaker mediated tachycardia, under sensing and over sensing. So, uh, these are the major complications you can expect once the patient has undergone pacemaker implantation. This is about what about pacemaker therapy, what are the indications of pacemaker therapy, which are the different types of pacemaker therapies and what are the nursing considerations and uh, what are complications. I hope it is a um, valid points you get from this what is pacemaker therapy and subscribe the channel and follow it for further information thank you